Gentlemen and kitties, thanks to Harley Davidson of North America, and I'm at the AIM Expo at Mandalay Bay in my hometown, Las Vegas. And today I will be riding this monster the Harley Davidson FXDR 114. All right, I better be careful in that exhaust because kind of <laughs> cooked my leg a little bit here. Alrighty, let's start it up. Ooh, very nice ceremony there. Let me see if it's a neutral. There you go, now it's a neutral. Alrighty, let me adjust my uh, side mirrors. So this is the super brand new for 2019 or 2018 FXDR. They're gonna taunt this as the sportiest Harley Davidson in their lineup as we wait for the guy in front of me to go ergonomics check I'm 6'3 200 to 225 pounds with a 35 inch inseam overall inseam this time I keep saying 32 inch but that's my jeans only so it's 35 inch inseam so I got the cruiser style leg down full flat footed and I got a size 13 foot so Will this bike beat that fat boy over there and the sport glide over there? So we'll see. Alrighty. After that squeezing out thing. Now, first impressions. It feels like a very aggressive cruiser. My foot still sticks out in front. My arms are like I'm riding like a Z900, uh, Z900 Kawasaki. It has that traditional Harley Davidson switch gear. Uh, one turn signal on each handlebar. If you're a Harley guy, you will feel at home with this monster. Yep. It has the similar switch gear as the uh, 883, the Iron, and some of the uh, affordable, uh, affordable ranged Harleys. So this is unlike any Harleys that I've seen by far. So first impressions, of course, it feels massive. So far, so good. The the right position is a little bit aggressive, and it's hard to put it to neutral. Let's see if it's easy to put it to neutral. There you go. You gotta rev it a little bit. So, so far so good. The primary gauge is on top. Unfortunately, it doesn't tell you much, actually. You got the digital speedometer and a digital tachometer with a digital fuel gauge. If I'm going to scroll through from the menu, menu bar right there. What the hell? Oh, okay. <laughs> I stalled on that one. So, welcome to the fabulous Las Vegas trip. <laughs> this is massive. So this, the engine out in this thing is awesome. Really brute force of America. The, uh, the riding position takes a little getting used to because usually on cruisers, you used to lay down like this, like that. But on this bike, you gotta slouch over a little bit. So this menu thing, below the speedometer, you can cycle through time, um, the trip meters, one A and B, the remaining uh, fuel left and everything. But the shift indicator um, is next to the speedometer over here. So uh, it engages once you fully release your gear shift lever. Clutch lever, by the way. What the heck? <laughs> oh my gosh, this is powerful! Oh my gosh, this might be my new flagship Harley that I would get because this thing is like the sound of Thor! Look at that! <laughs> Holy crap, the, the torque is so intoxicating! The rear brake uh, pedal has a little of a mushy feel but it's very tactile and easy to modulate. Like uh, like most Harleys in particular, 
Unfortunately, this is this Harley has one of its Harley trademarks of it's hard to put it to neutral. For some reason, the the gears are binded, so you gotta work your way a little harder to put it to neutral at some degree. But that sound, man, it's just so different. I think I can lean this bike more than most Harleys because the the pegs are almost on the same height as the some naked bikes that you see out there, like the Z900, the MT09. Look at this. Oh my gosh, I'm already doing stupendous speed already. It's so easy to uh it's so easy to uh rev match too. And also the clutch lever has a very stiff um actuation. So you gotta it over time if you're in a bumper to bumper traffic you might uh your hand might get a little bit sore right in this part of the knuckle right here so there you go that that sound it's like thor in his mirror with the lightning and thunder <laughs> so this is how it looks like you just better be careful if you're gonna you if you're gonna put your leg down a bit this exhaust will hit your leg right here so just be careful it will cook your leg Right here, when my leg is up, this airbag really hits my lower part of my leg. And I also noticed too, this Harley has clip-ons. What the hell? That's not traditional at all. Whoa! Oh, oh my! It's like a... It's like I'm trying to table wild horse on this one. Unfortunately, if you're not used to it, there's a significant amount of vibrations on the handlebars while you're on your butt you're pretty good it really isolates the vibrations on your butt and he has some minor vibrations on my foot pack just a little bit not significant but it's more significant on your hands so easy to uh rep match uh, compared to the Sportster, the, uh, the 883, or even the Fat Bob, I can finally see the quality on this bike. And it has clip-ons! <laughs> oh my gosh, this, the, the power is so addicting. And the sound makes it even more, more amusing. Tons of bikers right there. In Vegas right now, it's a bike week. So you'll see a lot of type of bike every October. And this is the first time that AIM is in Vegas. So I'm so happy that an event like this happens in my backyard. So happy, happy. I don't have to travel 600 to 1,000 miles for it. The key shift lever on my left foot, on the other hand, you have to really, you really have to, um, oh man, I can't put it to neutral. There you go. There's a technique. You gotta rev it a little bit more while your while your clutch is fully pressed. But for you to switch gears on this bike, you gotta really manhandle it. You really have to slam it up and slam it down as much as you can. Oh my gosh! Okay, gotta calm down now. So right now on a normal city streets like like right here, if you're in the right gear, it smoothens things out. It's not gonna be. It can be turned into a mellow, traditional Harley Cruiser, which is very good. It can be a dual-purpose big motorcycle. I'm very impressed. Right now I'm at fourth gear, cruising between 45 to 50 miles an hour in a 45 street, and at fourth gear I'm already at 2,500 rounds. So it's perfect if you keep it on fourth gear on this type of. Um, commuter streets like here it's so easy to rev match it's not even funny but of course like any harley everything in this bike has to be manhandled i'm just amazed the gauge on this bike is tiny it's almost as big as a apple watch <laughs> a low speed maneuverability is very easy um it doesn't feel as heavy as a traditional harley in fact, this bike feels lighter than the Iron 883 that I've ridden back in Long Beach. Ah, go ahead. Oh my gosh, if you want sore, just rev it up. But you can calm it down like right now. 
I'm already at fourth gear on this particular commuter street and it's very refined. I think I got my newest favorite Harley now. It has everything that I need in a Harley. Attitude, the torque, the power, and it also has the top of the line Milwaukee 8 engine, the 114, in a body that is somewhat feels lighter and not much bigger than the Sportster. 1200 so this bike can really handle a certain degree uh once i'm in a open road i want to see how many how many gears that this bike has because unfortunately most harleys has has a uh, five speeds but i think the fat bob and the fat boy has six speeds in this bike uh this bike is just attitude also uh the, the third signals is also self-canceling one thing to know that too so if you do mad ass lean it will cancel itself out after a few milliseconds the front brakes are, however has a little bit of a firm feel but it's still easy to modulate and light enough for you to use a one finger trigger thing yeah the clutch on the other hand it's more like 60 percent towards full release and of course you better be aware the the spring resistance of that clutch lever is pretty pretty stiff I mean I, I'm liking this bike already this is my new favorite Harley at this point so I'm at fifth gear at 50 it's going 2200 revs okay it has six gear that's for freeway then because it's it's too low already let's see how it, much it leans oh my gosh it leads so so sharply really leads it can lean more i'm not used to lean like that in a harley especially with my, the, my current rentar the iron 883 this one the leads you can lean more on this bike than most harleys i think i i think even the 750 you can lean more extremely than the uh than most harleys but this bike has a has enough clearance for you to lean even harder if you want to look at that side of las vegas McCarran International Airport, my neck of the woods. <laughs> yeah, there's so much, so many things that are revolutionary in this bike that I'm very impressed on. It doesn't take much for you to appreciate what Harley has become, especially they're trying to break through with other categories like the Adventure Touring, the Pan American, right? It looks kind of odd, but I gotta see it on myself. But it looks promising in that street fighter that they're about to come out usually they basically copied Buell for that they could have just bought Buell back and just built the street fighter but no and then they have this uh, electric bike that they're gonna release soon very commendable effort Harley you know they got some some problems too so yeah, it's very smooth on smooth surfaces. The suspension calibration in this bike is almost similar to the Fat Boy, but not too wallowy, not too soft as the Fat Boy. But this one has just the right amount of smoothness. The riding position is a little awkward for me. At the moment, it's giving me some upper back pains right now because I'm a little bit hunched up with my feet forward it feels like i'm riding a indiana bobber the scout bobber it has the same shoulder forward leg forward position it doesn't have that relaxing riding position as the uh the fat boy or the fat bob see fifth gear just full on throttle it will just jump let the torque handle it but the fifth gear feels chugging already at this type of speed so the perfect uh, gear here is fourth gear because you still have that all that available torque in just one grip there you go let let me try leaning this bike again see how how far can it lean Whoa! <laughs> it really does lead like a naked bike amazing Good job, Harley Davidson. Good job, FXDR. Fix Doctor. That's my nickname for this bike. Fix Doctor. FXDR. Fix. Everything that I didn't like it about in a Harley has been fixed on this bike. Well, of course, I gotta modify the handlebars a little bit. And there's some bar end weights on this. 
and it'll be just fine. If I'm gonna get the Harley for the status symbol, this is the Harley I might get. This is my, this is my new favorite Harley now. The, the fat boy gives you the Terminator look. The Sport Glide has a lower horsepower, a little bit more casual bike in comparison, but this one is just awesome. I'm gonna put up this price on how much this bike really is. I bet this is not cheap, but if, if this bike is less than 15 grand, I will be stupid amazed on this bike. I will be highly impressed. Very good value for money. See, it's so flicky. Sure, it's not as flicky as a typical naked bike, duh. But for a Harley, it's very flicky. Look at that. Oh, nice. A Morgan. Look at that Morgan. Very nice. That looks like a plus, uh, plus something, whatever. <laughs> this is a bike show. <laughs> it just takes practice for you to put it to neutral, though. So, yeah, the side mirrors are standard fair Harley Davidson's. The, the left mirror almost hits my little riding glove right here. That's mostly all the time. The secondary gauges are familiar. If you're familiar with Harleys, it's right there. For some reason, this part right here is blank on top of the F, uh, FXDR logo. I don't know why they did that. But other than that, everything on this bike is like a Hulk. See, the airbags is big. It stands out. Oh, nice classic car over there. It looks like a Riviera. Oh, well. Hello, Mr. Officer. Right now, I'm back at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. Slow speed maneuverability is pretty good. It's pretty awesome. It's so maneuverable. It feels like, it feels way lighter than the 883 or the 750. I know those are lighter bikes, but I feel a lot lighter in here compared to those two Harleys. It's almost like I'm riding a Scout 60. That's how odd this bike is. And that's a good thing. That's a very good thing. Major points on that one. Right now, I'm back at Harley Davidson air, uh, booth area. And here you go. Okay, neutral, then off. And the key is whatever. I don't. Doesn't matter. The kickstand is pretty easy. You can see that loop over there. It will kick out like that. No problem. Amazing motorcycle. Number one. <laughs> As what I saw this bike when it come came in. This has LED headlights right here. LED turn signals over here. Badass uh, air intake right here with a red indentation over here. Just be careful when you put your foot down on with this pipe. It will cook your leg. And it has a suspension dampening at the for you for the rear suspension. That's pretty good. Amazing bike. I like this detail right here too. The LED everything right here. But most most guys will just put an LED right here and then they just put a license plate inside like a crotch rocket. <laughs> One thing I also forgot to mention is the seat. Oh, storage? Oh, right. It's like a sport bike. They put a storage at the back. All right. Very awesome. That's a f that's that's very different from a Harley, yeah. <laughs> One thing I also noticed on this bike is the seat is very comfortable. One of the best seats I've ever ri sat on in a Harley. That's amazing. So there you go. The Harley Davidson FXDR. Two thumbs way up. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.